Welcome back. Richard, it's good to see you this morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Now, today's podcast is is, is on a bit of a challenging topic because yeah. it's on a topic that n- nobody really wants to wants to or likes to talk about unless they're in the situation where they need to talk about it and they don't have a choice. But we're going to talk a little bit about um, when relationships are coming to an end and, and divorce and especially divorce relating to couples with kids. Right. If if I was going to come up with a title for this, it would be something like a new look at an old problem, because what we're going to talk about today is something that's really, really new. It's an emerging concept, uh, not fully formed, you know, just just uh, full disclosure. It's it's a concept that's not fully formed. It's it's one that even you and I talk gingerly about, um, right. you know, because there are a lot of there are a lot of questions that remain. But we wanted to introduce the idea today, and and we'll probably talk about it more in the future. But um, certainly, this is a first glance at at a new approach to di- to uh, to divorce. <clears throat> Absolutely, and you know, just a little bit of behind the scenes. You know, usually we we come in and we um, prepare, we, we get ready, and, and just sit down and start to work towards mm-hmm. um, doing the podcast, recording, and everything, and. But we spent a, a good little while this morning kind of talking about this idea before we started recording because it, it th- this th- this approach, this um, perspective that this author has um, is is as you said, very novel. It's very new. Um, and I think that just going into it, I think we have to say that this is certainly not a an, an approach that everyone can take, you know. Right. We we talk about things like collaborative divorce. We've talked about that in the past. We've talked about, um, you know, the importance of how parents should interact after divorces to, you know, for the best interest of their kids. We've talked about those kinds of things. Um, and, and those are things that I think that a good majority of couples can do um, when they're going through a divorce or, or separating. But um, but this is a this is a whole new thing, and this is a whole new idea, and um, and and it certainly isn't something that everyone will be able to do. Right. Yeah. And just by way of introduction, <clears throat> most of us, when when we think about a marriage, a marriage with children, mm-hmm. typically ends. You have two choices um, when you have children, and I often say to couples, look, if you have children, you're never going to be divorced, you're right. because you're still going to have to take care of these children. You're still going to have to communicate with each other. Some parents do a better job at that than others. But when you're divorced, you're you're going to stay together in some way. You really have two choices when you're when you have children and you're thinking about a divorce. If you leave, if the couple separates, the the married couple separates, you're going to turn your children's lives upside down, no matter how old they are. You're, it's it's incredibly disruptive to everybody. The other right. choice is I'm staying for the children. Right. And many people do that. I'm I'm in this marriage. It's a loveless marriage. It's a difficult, dysfunctional marriage. I'm going to stay for the children. So in a divorce, everybody pays a price. There's an emotional price and a financial cost and uh, your schedules get disrupted. And children in particular suffer at every developmental level, if they're very young, if they're preschoolers, that's one set of challenges. Once they start school, there's another set of challenges because now they have to have clothes and toys and things at both houses and they have to travel back and forth. Um, young teenagers have their own struggles because they're just entering, they're entering a new and more difficult phase of development. And they start parent shopping and playing parents against each other. And then you have high school students who are dating. Um, they, many times they they are in a um, neighborhood where they don't want to leave because all their friends are there. And dad's living somewhere else or mom's living somewhere else. So each at each stage of development, there are unique challenges for children. Um, yeah. And there's no there, there just isn't any easy way through this for most couples. Yeah. So most of us have this concept in our head, two choices. Should I stay or should I go? And, and, you know, and, and I think as we often talk to parents, you, you know, 
divorce is disruptive. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not necessarily the right choice. Um, and and the, the, the amount of disruption depends on the parent's behavior and the way that they work together after the divorce. And, you know, there are certainly times when, goodness, Richard, I, I think I think we spend more time consulting with each other with couples that we're working with that are divorced, where they just they just can't get along. Like mm -hmm. they 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 just can't cooperate with one another, and they just argue about everything. Clearly, mm -hmm. that's going to be really difficult for the kids. Now, right. you take that and you compare that to a couple who they negotiate well, they communicate well. They don't necessarily like each other. They don't necessarily want to be friends. But they, they are allies. They're working together um, for the best interest of the kids. And, and as you said, I, I think that what happens is people um, people so often get into this mindset that, um, you know, because divorce has, um, you know, can have such a such a negative influence and negative impact on the on the kids um, in general, parents have that. Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay and you know stay for the sake of the kids, um, or should I or should I leave and and risk some of this um, some of this turmoil? And today we're going to talk about a potential third option, um, maybe a third option for some people, um, especially those I think that are saying that they want to stay for the kids. I think that this third option is for, in particular, for that group of people. Right. And that's what I like about this is that it gives you a third option. It's not for everybody. Clearly, there are couples who probably won't be able to do this. Right. But I think many couples can if 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 they if they replace an adver if they replace adversity with being allies. You know, you, you can have an adversary or you can have an ally. Right. And if your children are really most important to you, and, and parents will say that, they'll, you know, you'll stay in a dysfunctional marriage for the sake of the children. I mean, many people do. So if your children are really the most important um, issue for you, then this might be an alternative uh, for you. It also depends on the kind of problems you had in your marriage. Uh, some problems are more consequential than others. So it may not be for everybody, but I think it offers a really good um alternative uh for many many couples right and what it's based on a very simple premise the romantic aspect of your relationship has ended for for whatever reason or reasons that thing about we're in love and we're going to be in love forever and we're going to be together for the for all time and you are my soul my, all that romantic aspect of your marriage is has ended and what this requires is that you change the nature of your relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a time when you weren't together at all. You didn't even know each other. Then you fell in love and you had a romantic relationship and then that ended. So all you're doing in this new relationship and it's called a parenting marriage, that's the name of it, parenting marriage, is that you're replacing the romantic relationship with a working relationship as co-parents you, right. you've agreed you've agreed to co-parent your children and you're replacing a romantic relationship with a working relationship right right and now this this sounds um this can sound a little bit radical but yeah. what the what the what the idea is is that you know when we when we look at marriage uh, marriage is a, a relatively modern um really yeah. and, and it's and it's very culturally based you know marriage in different cultures look a little bit different and right. um marriage has looked different over time over over the over the decades um mm -hmm. but you know you you have you know you can have two perspectives of marriage one one is more sort of uh, religious, cultural, you know, that um, there's a ceremony and it's till death do we part and, and all, all of that. But you also have sort of the legalistic tax related, um, you know, contract. It's mm -hmm. the paperwork that says, you know, we're married and we are contractually <laughs> obligated to be together. And, um, and so we, we can file taxes together. We can do these things. We can have benefits of being a unified couple through the state recognized sanctions. And so, you know, 
but but those two types of marriage can be very different. You know, exactly. those, those two different yeah. perspectives can be can be quite dramatic. Right. I think of the commitment. One is a ceremony. It's it's a it's a public ceremony right. where you're publicly acknowledging that you are coming together. Okay, and it has religious or civil no religious um, usually tied to uh, religious traditions of we're going to bring these two people together. Um, and that's a public announcement that we are now husband and wife. And and if you could imagine being in a small village where these things started, you know, take a, a little Italian village in or Italian um, uh, village, and and you know, there's uh, a th two thousand people in the village. Well, if this couple announces publicly that they're a couple, it's sort of it's like we, what kids do in high school. You know, are you dating? You know, and then the word spreads that you're a couple. So so don't mess around with anybody else. So this was a public announcement that we now are a couple. We're no longer on. We're no longer dating. We we are together. But there's a second marriage, which is a contract, which is a legal contract, and that's the license or the certification that you need. So all our marriages in in our culture are always two things: they're a commitment and they're a contract. And there are, but we have to remember that there are still four types of marriages in our country. Okay, there's the traditional marriage, um, which is the idea of a, a man and a woman. And, and in the 1990s, there was a there was a there was much controversy politically about this issue. And the Congress produced something called the Defense of Marriage Act in 1996 that said marriage is a union between a man and a woman, a biological man and a biological woman. Um, and that was tested legally. Um, and, in and in 2013, it changed because then it said, no, it doesn't have to be. It, it violates the Fifth Amendment to say it has to be a man and a woman. It's a violation of the Constitution. So in 2013, the concept changed. And then in 2015, we have the sanctioning of same-sex marriage. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court said it's unconstitutional to prohibit people of the same sex from getting married. And this is all legal stuff. This is the licensed, legal, civil part of marriage. And then you have a common law marriage, which there's no ceremony. Um, and typically there's no license, but it's sort of the same agreement. It's You still have the agreement and you still have all the sanctions of a marriage. And then you have the fourth kind of marriage, which is uh, marriage by agreement. And this is typically what we see in a pre prenup, a prenuptial agreement, where people sort of lay out what their relationship is going to be like. So even in the United States, where we typically think that marriage is this single construct, there are four types of marriages that are sanctioned by the Constitution. Right. right. And so, so in a traditional marriage, and I think where we run into trouble is most of us, and certainly the legal system, much of the legal system, is based on the concept of a traditional marriage. Right, right. And that, and that's the what, what we typically think of with marriage, which is, you know, we're going to live in the same house, we're going to raise a family together, um, even if the family is just a couple, um, right. when you're in the family together, you're going to stay together forever, you know, till death we, do we part, um, and we're going to remain, you know, faithful with one another. And, it, and again, a lot of these concepts you know, if you just think about what has happened socially over the past right. in a couple of decades, a lot of this has changed because now we have we have marriages that look very different than mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. But we still kind of, you know, when most people think about marriage, they tend to think about this traditional marriage as sort of the template that, that right. we work from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think of even in my lifetime, my when my grandparents married, so this would be like several generations ago. My grandmother married for life. She knew that she was going to be married for life because she couldn't own anything legally. Right. She wasn't allowed to own anything when she was. She couldn't even vote when she when she was young, but she wasn't allowed to own anything. So once she made the decision to marry, it was for a lifetime because when she left, she had nothing. And right. so in it, so marriages have changed over time. Mm -hmm. And this idea of staying together forever and being faithful and, and raising a family till death do us part has already changed because 
60% of marriages end in divorce. Mm -hmm. So in fact, we have already changed this definition via divorce. Right. 60, 60 or 70% of us don't adhere to a traditional marriage. Right. And so, in divorce. and so in that way, traditional marriage is sort of more aspirational. Um, you know, right. it requires a, a lot more work and a lot of um, time and energy and, and effort to to make mm -hmm. it uh, to that, you know, make that last and to 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 reach those goals. But, you know, there, there's again, we, we have to we're presenting today this idea of, of another option for mm -hmm. those who, you know, maybe kind of entered into a, a marriage with the idea of, you know, wanting this traditional marriage and and, and they had a, started a family and have, have children. Mm -hmm. But then they get to a point in the relationship where the, the, the some of the romance is gone, the, um, you know, and, and the, just to be, you know, we, we have to be very clear that these things happen, you know, people change over time. And it's nobody's fault necessarily that that something happens in the marriage or something happens in the relationship where they they end up separating and, and looking towards divorce. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just having children introduces a tremendous amount of stress and a tremendous amount of work into a relationship. And if a couple isn't working, able to work together to meet those demands, Mm -hmm. The marriage is, is not going to do well, and they're going to end up looking towards, you know, some of these kinds of options. And so this, this other approach, this parenting marriage, as you, you mentioned a minute ago, kind of looks at it from a different perspective. And again, I think that it's primarily, mm -hmm. you know, I, I could see it maybe working for some of those families who, or those couples who say that they want to stay together for the sake of the kids. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, that that doesn't work out as well as the couple thinks because there is a reason why you're thinking about divorce, you know, and, and you're trying to, and what usually what people do when they say that they're going to stay together for the sake of the kids, what they're saying is, is that we're going to keep trying at this traditional idea of a marriage. We're, we're going to keep at this traditional model and, and keep trying with it, even though we know it's not working. That's right. Because the truth, what you did is you you had a romantic relationship and you decided to do a traditional marriage. Mm -hmm. Well, once the romantic relationship was over, the traditional marriage crumbles. Right. Because you can't maintain the four concepts, the four ideas of a traditional marriage, because now the romantic part of your relationship has ended. So you no longer have a traditional marriage. Right. Because the, the foundation, the romantic relationship, has, has evaporated, bit, uh, died, been destroyed, however it ends, mm -hmm. the romantic aspect of your relationship has ended. And so, as a in fact, many marriages, many traditional marriages right. end, and they end in divorce, but you have this problem of what about the children? How, how do we take care of the children? Because we don't want to, you know, children in, in typical divorce, children either become weapons or they become casualties. Right. And that's what that's what most parents, we love our children and we don't want harm to come to them. And so we don't want our children, despite the differences that we that the adults have with each other, we don't want to weaponize our children, certainly. And, and also we don't want our children to become casualties. Right. But what are the options what are, what are the options. Well, here, the parenting marriage, it's not the only option, but it's the one we want to focus on. The parenting marriage offers an alternative to uh, that rancorous divorce that damages everybody. A absolutely. And so what what the author proposes is this idea of the couple staying together, um, mm -hmm. staying in the home together, and um, working together, really meeting, and especially meeting, certainly meeting with a professional to kind of mitigate and through, immediate through some of these decisions. But what they're going to do is they're going to stay together and and really on the surface perhaps look as though they're still married and they're still living with the children and they're still uh, in, you know in the same home and all that kind of stuff. But they um, they agree that because the romantic part of our relationship is gone, we're going to have more of a, a partnership um, with the idea of co-parenting. So we're going to live together. We're going to stay together. 
but we're going to do so really just as parents, not as a traditional married couple. That's um, right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that again, that, that can be very difficult for some people, and you're going to have a lot of a, a lot of details to work out. But mm -hmm. the, the the idea is is that the couple is staying together for the children, right? But, but instead of putting on the facade, either within themselves or with other people, instead of maintaining a facade that we are living this traditional married life, mm -hmm. we're just a, we're just parents living together to parent our children and to maintain some consistency and support for them. And the, these individuals, these parents, they may start dating other people, they may start other relationships and those kinds of things. But the idea is that, that they're working in this partnership together mm -hmm. for the sake of parenting their kids in a consistent and, and, and um, reliable, stable um, family home. That, that's right. Um, so, we tend to think of, uh, we, we use this word ex, my ex-husband, my ex-wife. And there's an article, uh, it appeared in, the, I think it was in the New York Times. Yeah, the New York Times. And it's written by a woman who has, she and her ex-husband have built a parenting marriage. And, and she writes about the experience. And what they did is they they have a house that, it's actually two houses, it's like a townhome. And there's one living, one space on the second floor and one space on the first floor. And the the child goes back and forth whenever he wants. He goes to dad's and has stuff there and he goes to mom's. So it's been made very easy for the child. The parents have agreed that the romantic part of their relationship is over. They they made that agreement and made that acknowledgement and said, okay, but, but now let's change our relationship and become good parents. Let's co-parent together. Uh, they're not living in the same space. They're living in the same building. Okay. Um, you can live in the same neighborhood and do, and accomplish the same thing. So the term X, what, what this writer says is she no longer thinks of X as somebody who's out of her life, but X as a crossing. Uh, it's not a crossing out. It's a coming together and like a like uh, the two things intersect now and they come together, but you're together for a different reason. Um, and I love the way she phrases this. She said, our marriage didn't work, but our separation has. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think the that's one of the kernels of this whole idea is your marriage, your marriage didn't work, but, but your separation is working really well. Right. Yeah. Oftentimes when, when couple, a couple is separating and, and going towards a divorce, um, Oftentimes it's a declaration of war, right? Yeah. And you have one one parent going against the other parent, and um, oftentimes both parents are going at each other. Full, right. we'll tell. Um, sometimes it's one just um, going after the other. But what what we tend to recommend is um, is more uh, a, a a more civil um, approach, yeah. and you, you can do that through mediation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's one of the recommendations that we often make towards for couples who are looking to separate. And we talk about mediation so that they work things out instead of fighting to to get whatever they want or what right. they, what they think they want. You know, they they work towards a mutual agreement, um, sort of a, a a an adjustment of that or a tweaking of that is something called a collaborative divorce. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very cooperative. We we, we have been involved in um, with a a cohort of uh, professionals who are promoting uh, collaborative divorce as an option for people. And I think that it's a really nice, gentle way to work through all of the challenges associated with a divorce, but to do so in a way that is healthy, not just for the kids, but also for the parents. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really a gentle approach to divorce. Um, your needs are being met each each parent has an attorney who's looking out for their legal needs but your the focus is on the children how do we structure our new life our new relationship that works best for the children not for either parent but for the children so it's right. a completely different focus uh, absolutely then we have this third approach so you have mediation collaborative divorce now there is this emerging this new new approach called parenting marriage and where the idea is you change the changes from a romantic relationship to co-parenting, to real co-parenting. 
Yeah. And so, yeah, from that from that traditional perspective of what a marriage is to a marriage based upon an agreement to parent um, as the primary focus of the of the relationship, Um, you know, some people do that um, as a way to sort of uh, gently work themselves into the idea of a divorce. You know, it's it can. you know, they can begin with a parent, you know, looking at it as a parenting marriage as they, you know, some people talk about working towards the divorce. Some people use it as a way to see if they can work out um, issues in their in their marriage so that they can stay together ultimately. Um, but the idea in the very end, the, the idea is we have to stop fighting. And, and I think, you know, whatever, whatever option you take, whatever mm-hmm. uh, approach you take, if the marriage isn't working, if if you're arguing and you're fighting and and there's a lot of turmoil, that's not good for kids. You right. know, as bad as we say divorce is, for a kid to hear arguing and to see, you know, let, let, let's be honest, kids can recognize when it's a loveless marriage. Sure. You know, kids kids see that, and you, you don't want your kids to grow up thinking, well, this is what a healthy marriage is. Our parent, my parents live sleep in separate rooms, and you know they. They act like they love each other and they they do things like that sometimes when I'm in front of them. But then I hear them say these horrible things to each other when mm-hmm. I'm not in the room. You know, that is that is really damaging to, for kids. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes a, a divorce, even though it can cause some damage, it's better than the alternative. It's better than staying together and having those ongoing fights and arguments and conflicts. And so what we encourage people to do is if you are in that situation and, and the marriage just isn't working, let's just agree that it's not working right. and start working in a, moving in a direction that says, let's have a healthy separation. Let's, let's have a healthy transition to this next stage so that we can care for the kids and make sure that they're healthy and, and stable. Right. That's right. And that's what I love about this approach is that It's a different way of thinking about divorce, about your ex-spouse, about your children, about marriage, about everything. It's it, we're asking people to think about things differently. And and it struck me as I was uh, reading all this material that this reconceptualization of your relationship, we're asking you to think about it differently. Well, that's the whole basis of cognitive behavioral therapy. Right. So there's there's really nothing different about this. It's it's cognitive behavioral therapy applied to a marriage. We're asking you to think about your divorce, to think about your ex, to think about your parenting, just reconceptualize all that so that it works for your children. Mm-hmm. Granted, this this approach requires incredible patience and a lot of grace. I mean, you have to be willing to offer grace and charitable. You have to be charitable and you have to have patience, but it's a good trade-off because while you're giving something up, you're getting a great deal in return. And that is that you don't have to have this upheaval in your children's lives. They don't have to live out of a backpack. Um, They don't have to wonder where their shoes are and where their sneakers and soccer cleats are. Um, you, you, You remove all that pressure all that upheaval from your children. So while it requires work on the part of the parents, the 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 return is that you you don't have to leave your children and you don't have to cause them anguish and distress. A- absolutely. And so, you know, when you when you think about a parenting marriage or you think about mediation or or a collaborative divorce or or whatever whatever method you take in in making some of these transitions to you know the, this new chapter, as, as we you know mm-hmm. is often referred to, this new chapter in life. You know, think about what you're doing, not because of the marriage not working out, not because of how you feel about your your partner, but because right. you love your child, because it is healthy for a child to have both parents in their life, because mm-hmm. you would rather you know work towards love um, and having your kids in a, in loving relationships as opposed to you know surrounded by hate mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of all of these things 
we want to work in a way that that is is positive and and supportive and encouraging. And again, I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of we want our kids to um, we want to model for our kids what a healthy relationship is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes kids kids know this inherently, but we have to let kids know that sometimes relationships don't work out, and that's okay. Right. That's and, right. and if they don't work out, we need to do something about it. You don't suffer through it. You know, you would never encourage your, you know, eight-year-old child to um to to tolerate somebody being mean to them and somebody abusing them at school just for the sake of being nice to them because they're in the same class. You would never yeah. encourage your kid to do that. And so you don't want to model that for them at home. So right. so sometimes we have to take these, you know these steps that we would, that we wish that we didn't have to take, but if we're going to do it, let's do it in a way that's going to be supportive and healthy for our kids. Yeah. Let's always remember that we want to model when we're married and we have children, we want to model a healthy marriage relationship for our children so that our children see what a healthy, right. good marriage looks like. If unfortunately you decide that divorce is now an option, you want to model, I mean, as you said, you have you say to your children, sometimes people fall out of love, sometimes relationships end. You also want to model how to end a relationship. Right. You know, there are religions that have pre-Cana conferences getting ready for marriage, and there are divorce conferences where a, a, a clergyman or a rabbi will help a couple to divorce gently. All right. So there, it's really not new, but we're asking you to think about it differently rather than hate, um, you know, love your children and do what's right for them. Spend your energy, spend your time, spend your energy on taking care of your children rather than despising your ex. Uh, you and your ex have to work together. Model what you want. Show your children that sometimes it doesn't work, but there is a gentle way to do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's that's it for today. Um, we, we will include the link to a couple of these articles in the show notes. So check those out. And um, I, I, again, I'm sure that as with everything, I'm sure that we will revisit this topic again in yeah. the future as, as more um, research and stuff comes out about some of these different ways to, for dealing with these, these difficult, difficult issues. Mm -hmm. All right. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. <laughs>